On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we change a four jaw chuck to a three jaw chuck or a collet chuck on our center lathe. The chucks themselves are held onto the spindle by three camlock screws which are located at the back of the chucks themselves on the spindle nose. To remove the chuck, we need to undo these three camlock screws into their open position and then slide the chuck off. To protect the bed so we don't drop anything off the spindle nose onto the bed and bruise it, we protect it with a bed guard, which is just a piece of wood that we place on the bed to stop it getting bruised. And we can sit our chucks on there ready to be taken off or on. We need a cam lock spanner which fits the cam locks at the rear. About a 70 degree turn on the cam locks will position them into their open positions. If we undo one, you can actually hear a click as it falls into place. Two, three. What sometimes happens is at the front of the spindle nose, it has a taper, so we have a male and female taper, and they stick together. So with our hide mallet, you can support the front of your chuck, and just with a, a light tap, it breaks the seal on the two tapers. We can then, with two hands, support the chuck itself and lift it up and off onto our guard. Here we can see three cams in the corners and the cam lock screws are inside the spindle nose. So then to replace it with a three jaw chuck, place our three jaw ready to be placed on. We line the cam lock holes up with the screws checking that the two tapers and all the mating faces on the chuck are clean and there's no debris and swarf. Now we can lift it straight up and onto the machine. While supporting the front, we can then tighten the rear cam lock screws. If we just go around all three screws finger tight, then round again to make sure that they are locked in place. Remove our bed guard. We now have three jaw chuck ready to be used. And that's how we change a chuck on a centre lead. On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we remove the hard jaws on a three jaw chuck and replace them with a set of soft jaws for a three jaw chuck. The hard jaws themselves are held in position on three slideways, which are numbered one to three, with a scroll that rotates the back of the chuck when you rotate the chuck key. So by rotating the chuck key clockwise, the jaws move in together, and rotating the chuck key anti-clockwise, they move out together. So to remove the jaws, we go anti-clockwise until all the jaws are released from the slideways and from the scroll. Each jaw is numbered one to three and they must correspond with the numbers on the sides of the slideways. If you don't get the numbers correctly, the jaws won't meet together in the middle. Our soft jaws are numbered the same, so number one goes with slideway number one.
by rotating the chuck key you can see the scroll start come into view the scroll interacts with the grooves on the back of the jaws which moves it in and out as the scroll turns push your soft jaw into place clockwise turn the chuck key and the jaw should be bitten into place Move to number two. Check that the scroll start is in view. Press the jaw home, turn so it engages. Lastly, number three. Check that the scroll start is becoming into view. Place it out the way, press the jaw home, turn clockwise the chuck key. All three jaws then should be moving in at the same time and should be true to each other. So then if you need to hold a component just on its outer edge but hold it true to its back face and then put a component in, lock it into place, guard over and the component should turn true. And that's how we change hard jaws to soft jaws or vice versa, soft jaws back to hard jaws. On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we set a right hand knife tool to the center height of our machine. Firstly, we take our fixed dead center, which fits into the tail stock of the machine, and the male taper fits onto the female taper of the tail stock nose. We can drive that home. I now know that the center of our tail stock runs through the exact center of our spindle. Anything above that center height is too high, anything below that center height is too low. We take our right hand knife tool that's already in our tool holder and can place that into the tool holder clamp. Take our spanner and clamp that into position. And then if we move the front of our right hand knife tool to the front of our fixed dead center, we'd then be able to see if we are above or below center height. If we are above or below, we can alter that center height with the adjustment screw on top of the tool holder. We take our tool holder spanner, a 45 degree turn will release it, and turning our screw clockwise will make our tool come up, or anti-clockwise will make it go down. We can now check our tool again. And if we're happy, we can move that up to our machine face. With our tool post spanner, we can give the tool itself some clearance to pass along the front of the face and then lock that in position. Bring the tool up to the front face, close our guard and start the machine. With our compound slide, we can touch the front face Set our dial to zero, wind the cross side away, place a cut on of 0.5 of a millimetre and uniformly wind across the face.
we have faced our component and reached the center of our component as well and we still leave a pip in the middle of our machined face we know that our tool is below center height so as a fine adjustment we can then raise the tool to our exact center height by lifting it turning clockwise locking the tool hold in place and repeating that process set our die to zero find the cross side away put on a cut to 0.5 millimeter Once we have remachined our face and there are no pips at the front standing proud, we know that we've set our right hand knife tool to the exact centre height of our centre lathe. And that's how we set up the centre height. On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we centre drill and drill a component on our centre lathe using the tailstock. If in our tailstock we already have our fixed dead center that we've used to correctly set our center height, we need to extract that from the tailstock. So by turning the handle anti-clockwise, we pull the front of the tailstock spindle back and pull the center onto an extractor pin. So just by supporting the center and winding back, we should eject the center. winding the tailstock nose forward again we can then replace it with our Jacob's chuck which has the Morse taper on which is the same taper as the female Morse taper inside our tailstock on the end of our Morse taper we have a tang this tang needs to be horizontal to the machine for it to enter the tailstock if it's vertical it won't stay home so Horizontally, you can place it into the tailstock and push it home so it holds. Firstly, we always put in a hole into a flat face. You need to centre drill the component first. So with the centre drill, you can place that in our tailstock. And lock it in place with the Jacob's Chuck key. We can slide our tailstock up close to the front face and then lock it off with our tailstock locking handle. Then pull the guard over, safety glasses on, start our machine. easily give an indentation on the front of our component which then is a pilot hole for the drill that we're about to use. We can then remove our centre drill and replace it with the drill that we want to use. Tighten it up with the Jacob Chuck key, bring the tailstock forward just short of our machine face. Use the locking handle to lock the tailstock. Guard over, start the machine again. And slowly wind the drill in to your required depth or all the way through the component.
can then undo our tailstock clamp, push the tailstock back out the way. If we need to drill a hole in a component that is above 30 millimeter diameter, which is the maximum a Jacob's chuck will hold, we then need to use another Morse taper. So it is then a case of removing the Jacob's chuck, replacing it with a drill with the required Morse taper, and using this then to drill the hole required. And that's how we drill from the tailstock.